So for those of us who don't know who you are, who are you and what do you do? Um, my name is Charlie Mellinger. Uh, it's Mellinger, not Mellinger. <laughs> um, 28. I'm from Little Rock, Arkansas. I live here in Fayetteville currently. Um, I am a songwriter. I'm a, really just a dude living life and documenting it, really, when it feels like it needs to be documented. Um, I love playing music. That's like my favorite thing to do. And I love doing it in front of people. Um, and I've pretty much set my life up to where I'm going to do that. You know, I've, I don't really have, you know, too many out of sight goals in mind. You know, I have, I have dreams, but I've, you know, set my life up to where I can play music for a living. And it's, changed my life for like the better I'm happy doing what I love and you know it's a beautiful stressful <laughs> journey that I have started and I'm like that one song I'm growing each day it's a it's a step-by-step -step process and it's a daily effort that I have to make to keep my life this way that I've you know formulated it and you know things happen curveballs happen and you just kind of have to roll with the punches and keep going with it um if this is what you know this is what i want to do um but yeah <laughs> i um i love camping i guess yeah i love hiking and being outside and you know being one with you know this thing that we're all a part of and being in tune with the very like basics like structures of it and not all the buildings and walls that we build up and I love being out in the in the thick of it I'd rather play outside any like any venues outside venues are my favorite probably just because you you know get to feel the wind blowing through your hair and you get to you know hear the trees rustle or you know I don't know, just you play to the sky it feels like you're playing a god and mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess that's who I am <laughs> How was your childhood growing up in Little Rock, Arkansas? Hmm. Um, a lot better than most people, I think. You know, I had a mom and a dad who stayed married my whole, like, they're still married today. You know, I grew up in a nice suburb of North Little Rock and, you know, had everything provided for. Um, my parents, like, got me into guitar lessons when I wanted to. I was raised in the church, so I got my early start in music there. Started singing in the choir and then ended up leading worship as I grew older. And that's kind of like where I fell in love with playing on stage and like playing in front of people. Yes, I was doing it for a different purpose, but I think that innate being in all musicians, once they step on a stage and they're like, wow, I can have this amazing feeling. Even I think that was the first time I ever got that was when I was doing that. But I have three sisters. I got uh, all older than me. I'm the baby. So I was kind of spoiled growing up. Um, I think a lot of that translates into my life today. Uh, but, you know, life was good. I didn't have hardly, you know, the things that I reflect on as like issues that could have been brought up were very minuscule. Like I had parents that loved me and had food in my belly every night and had a roof over my head. And, you know, that was a, almost feels like a lot of musicians that I know that write like really good like like that music that gets to your soul they had messed up childhoods growing up and it's like where does I don't know I'm not saying that I I don't know what that means but it's like why did I have such a good childhood and why did somebody else who's on the same you know I guess we're writing about different things and everything needs to be written about and everyone's you know experiences translates into their music and everything has to be written down so it takes each i guess it takes each type of life from each type of musician to but yeah it kind of feels i don't know unfair that i had such a good childhood compared to some of the people that i hear in my community that like they had messed up childhoods and you know or parentless you know have divorced parents have you know grief that happened to him early on that 
terrible things happen, but I don't know. I just try to hold love for those people I know and try not to like hold myself differently. So you were introduced to music from the church, right? Mm -hmm. When did you make that transition from singing in church to writing and producing, wanting to write and produce your own music? After college, I went to college for a semester and like a lot of my experiences then shaped my religious belief. And so I, and like not, not religious beliefs, but just like spiritual beliefs and like how I feel about all this going on. And I kind of separated myself from the church at that point and like the structure of the, you know, Christian church, the Baptist church that I was in and kind of like separated from that. And then, you know, had some friends when I got back to college, get back from college that, you know, introduced me to new music and introduced me to music that gave me the same feeling that worship music gave me. And it was, I call it hippy dippy music. The hippie music that's out there is really good stuff. And <laughs> you know, it has a lot of like spiritual meaning behind it. A lot of like stuff that I was connecting to in a way that I resonated more with. And, you know, it used different language and different verbiage for the same concepts and the same things that I was being taught, but I resonated more with this side of it. And so that's kind of where my life shifted and my spiritual belief shifted is to, you know, I don't know. Some people would have called me a hippie back in the day and I was doing that, but that translated into my music and I wanted to like express these things that I was feeling like in a way and it was never a thing that I planned. It was like, yes, I wanted to like play music for a living. I didn't know how that was going to happen, but one day songs just started like coming to me and I guess it was the more I played and the more I, you know, put effort and, and intention behind it, the more I was able to open myself up to what, what was possible. But I've never been the type to like really like sit down and I'm going to be like, I'm going to write today. That's probably should be something if like, if I want to be a songwriter being like avid about writing more, but it's more of like, I'm a funnel for things that come through. Like it's, I don't know. It's a weird, it's a weird phenomenon that I have within myself. Or like I, some days I have nothing coming on and then it's just like a burst of that creative energy that we get and like where where that source or that if that is coming from a source or if it's coming from us you know you know allowing yourself to be open to that is you know number one but I think once I started aligning my beliefs with something that more resonated with me and I was able to fully be myself I was able to open that up and open like open that channel and be able to start creating and creating music that I think is beautiful and music that is meaningful and you know substantial in my beliefs and like like things that have resonated within my community and you know I write songs for myself mainly but like I'm writing songs for you and you and you know the community of people that I have and hopefully my my life and my truth can resonate into you and you can see me through yourself, like or see yourself through me as the mirror that we are and, you know, share that experience of music and share that experience of, you know, emotion and nostalgia and, you know, I don't know, perseverance and dreams and I don't know, all the things that come with life. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you God for that transition of my belief structure you know I may not be involved in the church anymore but I'm still involved in church of some sort and God's calling really it's some may call it that I suppose what sacrifices have you had to make in order to pursue music a lot of money <laughs> for now you know, a lot of like financial like stability. And that's one thing like this day and age I know we're all struggling with as musicians is, you know, being like 
not stuck in survival mode. You know, and I made this decision. Like I, w- I went from making pretty good money for where I was at. I was bartending at a really popular bar and like doing pretty well for myself and pretty well for myself for the age that I was. And, you know, then one day it just clicked. and I was like, you got to stop this. You got to start playing music. And I was doing good for a little bit and everything was cool. I thought it was groovy and then it hit and I was like, wow, this sucks. I'm broke. I'm not getting any gigs. I'm not getting any work. I'm not, you know, no matter how hard I try to get work, I'm not getting work. Like what's happening? What's the breakthrough? And, you know, although it's not the most important thing when we live in this world where it's like people who work nine to fives are still struggling to pay their bills. People who work three jobs are still trying to pay their bills and stay afloat, you know, musicians who are doing it full time, you know, and I have side gigs. I'm not doing it necessarily completely full time, but like that's because of the world that we live in. And, you know, I could dedicate my life to a nine to five and go get another job and, you know, try to make, what I'm doing work, but I've tried to do that. It doesn't work. It's like I try to go hold down a job, but all my focus is on that job. And uh, I can't decompress when I get home. I can't write. I'm not open up to that creative energy that like needs to be present in order to like do this like career that I've chosen to do. And like, I have to, I don't have to, but like if I want to be successful, I need to be able to be creating and be producing and being like active in the community and being playing shows and have that energy to do that and so this like corporate world and like this money like this world that we have outside of this I mean they're all intertwined but like I can't do both and so like me at this stage of my game has had to sacrifice like you know nicer things in life you know vacations you know I'm not like having a new pair of clothes sometimes it's like you know you make sacrifices like what am I gonna do like but those things don't matter like the 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 material things don't matter to me it's like all right do I have food do I have a house do I have at least a couple days where I've seen a friend or two yeah like that's all like it really boils down to I've got a great partner that it helps share the load financially so like that's that's cool but I mean my life's pretty set up in a good way. I don't think I've had to make many other sacrifices. You know, I've opened myself up and I made this decision to pursue this career and, you know, God, the universe, this source, whatever you want to call it, or you, you know, you're the driving force in your life. You know, it like opens up. Like you get to see the opportunities. You get to see, you know, the beauty in it all. And like, I get the reassurance all the time that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And, you know, when I'm so stressed out about whatever it is, it's mainly finances because, yeah, it's mainly finances. Everyone stresses about that. But, you know, I get I get a reassurance that, like, everything's going to be okay and I'm doing this, you know, I'm supposed to be doing this. If you could somehow see your future and you saw that you never made a dime from pursuing a music career, would you still be doing music today? It's a good question. A long time ago, or like when I first started doing this like professionally, it was been 2021, and my goal was I'm my only goal for playing music is I want to pay my bills. I want to pay my bills playing music. And my first weekend that I quit my job and started doing that I made enough money for rent my first weekend I played three shows and that was it all my bills were paid for that month I was like wow okay that feels good and I kept doing it kept doing it money we got small like money just like comes and goes as it is but my life right now the way it is is so much better than what it was before and I don't have, I mean, if I'm look. I, it's kind of hard to say what I would feel in 10 years or, you know, in the future if I didn't do this. But right now I'm not making hardly anything doing it. I'm really, really happy. And I love this life. And I love this thing that I've chosen to do. And 
I'm already doing it, man. <laughs> you know, I <laughs> so I'd say yeah. If like, you know, yes, I'm working towards something, but I'm pretty content. And you know, if I were to stay like this, I get to do what I love, and I get to do you know. You know, when I want to do, I get to do what I love when I want to do it, you know, so yeah, I'd say I'd still probably do it if I didn't get to make any money. <laughs> Life tends to have a way of pulling you in different directions. Um, sometimes you kind of got, you kind of have an idea of where you're going and other times you do not know you don't have any idea at all where you're going. Where do you see life pulling you down? Which one of those roads? Mm -hmm. Well, I guess perfect example right now I'm dealing with like, I, I, my life, like my career as a solo musician and as a songwriter. And then my career, I have a band, Charlie Mellinger band and we're, you know, play all my songs but with a full piece and it's it's a completely different experience i want to have two things like that represent me as a musician as an artist and i'm trying to decide which focus i want to put in right now like do i want to push myself as a songwriter and as a solo artist and tour that way or do i want to put all of my energy and all my effort into this band and i know i can do both i just Currently, I'm not sure if, like, the band situation is set up enough to do something like, like, at the rate that I want to do it. So, I think, you know, me, it's me and my name regardless, you know. And so I think me going towards, you know, just writing songs and getting the experience myself on the road and, like, going out and doing what I want to do, you know, and then coming to coming back you know I'm not you know setting the band aside by any means but you know getting the experience so that I can take the band and you know like hey this is this is I can be a better leader I can be a better band leader you know yeah we could all go into a blind or we could go into it with somebody who's you know done it more and you know I could you know, we're all kind of at the same level of musicianship in this band and like we're all learning and doing it together just like just like everybody is, you know, we're all trying to figure it out at the same time. And so I think if I could go and, you know, have my experiences, it would help benefit the band and have them, you know, in the long run, at least if I'm thinking long term. But I've got some shows we got to prepare for right now. So band is focused right now. Mm -hmm. how strong of a hold does music have on you do you see yourself one day doing something else oh yeah but it's entertainment music related I want to I'll always write songs I'll always have I'll always play guitar I'll always sing now whether I'll be a touring recording you know traveling around you know playing music musician I don't think that that's what I want to do forever I want to do that and have that experience and like play big shows and play big crowds and yes I want to live that life but I want to take that and you know I want to open up my own production company someday and I want to open up a studio and I want to open up an art collective that is kind of like the place that we're in now but for you know, art of all sorts, not necessarily, I mean, there's, I want to have basically a warehouse where artists and creators of all sorts can come and, you know, have a free place of expression. And, you know, that's long term. That's like a, almost like a legacy I want to leave and like have this, have a place that's, you know, people can just come and create and, you know, people who may not have the resources to do it and just have that, you know, have that available to them. And I want to throw festivals. I want to throw shows. I want to, you know, have a piece of land that has a stage on it where I have, have whatever bands I want to come play on my land and have a throw a party. And, you know, 
that's all way down the road. Hope I don't know, maybe it could be sooner than I think, but you know, it's all music related. It's all art related. It's all community related. And same with my music. It's all community based. I'm trying to create shared experiences with people. You know, the crowd is just as part, just as much a part of the live music experiences as I am singing the songs on stage with my band backing me. You know, it's, we need everybody and everybody's got that creative part of them and sometimes that creative energy comes out and you know enjoyment of other people's art so but yeah music yes but music no at the same time what advice would you give new independent local musicians just keep doing it you know if you have the drive to do it and you have, I don't know, if you have, you have that calling one day, you know, and it's like, I want to do this. And maybe that could have been, you know, when you were a little kid or it could have been yesterday and you're an adult and you're like, man, I really want to do this. Go do it. You know, this is your life. This is, you have one shot, you know, in this and you know, in this body, in this form, this is like the time that you have made that decision to do it. So go do it, you know, work on your product. You know, if you're going to be out there, you're running a business, you know, work on your product yourself, you know, work on your music, work on your chops, work on your voice, work on, you know, all the things that come along with it. You know, I've had to work for 28 years on my sound I'm still working on my sound and it's not perfect and you know, I'm but I took voice lessons I took guitar lessons I did all the things and you know put myself out there you have to put yourself out there you have to take the risk you have to not be afraid to be told no you know no means next that's you know somebody out there wants to hear your music somebody out there is going to like have a smile on their face when they hear your music. It may not be everybody, but if you like your music, then that's all that matters. And the more you like your music, then the more other people will like their music because they'll see that authenticity through your music and they'll resonate with that because we all see each other for, you know, like who we are in the, in the eyes of each other, you know, and like the more authentic you are with yourself, you know, the more people will be drawn towards you. And, you know, you'll build your community, you'll build your fan base, you know. I was, I started in Branson and a small bar and started playing open mics really like to get myself out there and started like, you know, building a small community of people that like kind of got word and it kind of like started building up. And, you know, my whole life I've picked up fans along the way, but, you know, it wasn't until 2021 that I really started to like make that effort into this is what I'm going to do. And it was a process of like building your fan base and you have to go play. You have to go play places, you know, you can put out all the videos you want, but that's 10 seconds of somebody's attention span. You know, you're going to scroll right past it and people are going to scroll right past this video and not care about it. But, you know, people love going to live music. That's one thing you can't take away. We love going to shows. We go do it. So go, go play. Even if it's at the little bar that plays you 50 bucks for two hours of your time, go do it. Go start. Don't be greedy. You know, be, you know, have respect for yourself at the same time. But, you know, in the beginnings, take what you can get. Go play. Go have fun. Go live your life. If people want to get in contact with you, how would they? Um, social media is a great way. Um, you can, uh, you know, direct message me on anything. Please don't call me on direct, on Facebook Messenger. Don't do that. But uh, yeah, um, if you want to book me, uh, Charlie Melanger Music at gmail.com. And if you want to book the band, it's Charlie Melanger Band dot booking at gmail.com. Um, and love to talk to you about whatever. I love to collaborate if you want to, you know, write songs or, you know, need an ear for your music or a guitar player or a second voice or whatever. You know, and, you know, let's hang out. Let's do the thing.